guys and gals. Welcome back to my show, Coffee with Lisa. So excited to have you here. What do you need? I'm going to ask you a question. You can ask your lawyer. It'll only take a second. I'm going out. Watch the screens. I gotta talk to Hillis. Mm, big deal. Well, it could be a big deal. Why don't you tell me what you want and uh, I'll keep on call. Well, how well do you know him? I know him. Then why don't you help me out? Get back to your cell, Chief. Look, if I help you out, maybe you can help me out. I'm sure you've got nothing I want. Are you sure about that? What? You gonna tell me a dirty cop story? Pick up the phone, you imbecilic, witless, obtuse, puerile, doltish. Hello? Hello? The ongoing six decades, it became a city tradition until budget cuts forced its closure. Well, luckily for us, one very determined resident made it her mission to bring this time-honored event back to Woodside. Ladies and gentlemen, Carol Montgomery. One time I came here to stop somebody very dear to me from leaving. But when I saw her crying alone, I lost all my courage. I often wonder what the weather would have been like that day had she stayed. Never saw her again. Dozens of gray whales just offshore, not a soul to take out there. We've had a recession, crap weather, half a main street already shut. Now we're a murder town. Yes, a child died here. What tourist is going to want to come to Grace Point with all those tents front and center? Oh. Keep the change. You're going to need it. And we're back on the air. Well, that was a wonderful recap of Fred. And Fred Keating is a Canadian actor living out of Vancouver and is a partner in Lynn's Farney. 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 How do you say good. that, Gina? Good try. Lindisfarne. Just Lindisfarne. Lindisfarne. That's right. Welcome, you guys. So tell me a little bit, uh, Fred, about some of those roles and, and uh, how did you ever become an actor? That's the burning question everybody wants to know. I think I backed into it by luck, but but uh, uh, what you just saw was a, a two and a half minute uh, demo reel uh, with a, a variety of selections, uh, some serious, some comic, some melodramatic, some recognizable, some not, that uh, for allowing potential engagers of your services, if they have never heard of you or seen you in something, uh, this is the kind of thing that an agent sends out or directs people to on a website so that they can get an indication of the range of an actor, uh, right. how he looks in different situations, whether he can do comedy as well as uh, serious stuff. Although I know actors who have separate demo reels just for comedy and just for the dramatic. Uh, yeah. So very similar to in the speaker's world where a speaker has got a sizzle reel of, of caption of them being on stage or emceeing or what have you, which you also have a lot of experience doing. Uh, absolutely. That that kind of calling card uh, for those millions and billions of people around the globe who have no idea who you are, <laughs> but your name has been suggested to them for a potential role as either a master of ceremonies or as a dramatic actor. and before they get invested in you, they want to see 
uh, some evidence that uh, you know what you're doing. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. And so, Sheena, you handle all the video production side of, of that, uh, right from, I'm assuming, behind the camera to the editing. Let's talk a little bit about what happens behind the scenes. That's right. So I'm not on camera like Fred. I'm more behind the scenes, like you said. So um, I don't actually do any of the filming, the cinematography. There are experts that, uh, that we hire to do that. So I'm involved on the planning side. So everything from, uh, you know, client relations to auditioning, different talent, booking locations, booking travel, um, all that stuff. So when you work for a small uh, when you work for a small production company, you really get to do everything. We don't have one person that, you know, makes the coffee or takes out the garbage. We all do everything. So <laughs> really. well, I imagine there's a little bit of coffee going on and it's some garbage on a, on a movie scene. <laughs> sure, I'm drinking coffee right now. Coffee with Lisa. Fantastic. And so those aspiring actors that are out there right now watching this, I mean, you're the person to contact. That's right. Yeah, we love um, we love hearing from agents and from talent directly, um, hearing what they're what they're up to, and people dropping us a line is always nice to have because even if we've worked with you, you know, a couple of years back, if you're not top of mind and we have something last minute that pops up, um, it's always nice to know that you're you know you're still in town or you're going to be in town or what kind of stuff you've been working on. So absolutely, and it just doesn't apply to the movies, right? Like you have a wide range of production that you do from a number of different genres. Let's talk a little bit about that, what, what that looks like. I mean, you most recently, uh, from my understanding, won a, an award. That's right. Yeah, we won an award for best music video. And music videos aren't something that, we, um, that we've ever really done a, a ton of. But last year, we had an opportunity to work with a local gal, Lyra Brown. She's a really, really talented yeah. artist. And we, uh, we received a grant from Tell a Story Hive. To do okay. a video with her, so uh, not a not a massive amount of money. It's a ten thousand dollar grant, which is awesome. Um, but to do a music video and then to win uh, the best music video in Alberta for last year on that kind of a budget uh, is pretty is pretty spectacular. So we're we're really proud of that. And um, the good thing with with grants like that and with working with an artist like Lyra is that we really had a lot of creative uh, license to kind of do something totally out there. I don't know if, if you've seen it, but if you look for I it, have maybe, actually. a and little I, vulture told me it's, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty unique what we did. Pretty with good. I had planned to actually show it during the show, but because of some of our technical difficulties before I could only load one video. And so I, I chose to load the video of Fred, obviously. Now, Fred, you've done a wide variety of work. Um, we're talking about, you know, obviously as an actor, you're not, going to be awarded a grant to do work but you get paid obviously you've worked with hillary swank on the movie the core uh you've worked with leslie nielsen in fact from my understanding you wrote a script for him for a presentation that he had to do uh so you're not only an actor but you're also a writer so people who are trying to connect with you you need to know that about fred and fred soon will help be helping people earn their extra credits because he'll be teaching people how to overcome the fear of public speaking and that's a, a really pro big problem for a lot of people and it doesn't matter you know i know some professional speakers who've s been speaking for a number of years still have stage fright how do you overcome the fear of speaking, Fred? <laughs> In 25 words or less? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, uh, th there's, a, there's plenty of good news there. That's what I'll say. Anybody who's joined a, a Toastmasters uh, club, for example, learns very quickly the, the first and basic lesson, and that is how often the audience is actually pulling for the speaker. However they may appear, that is, however the audience faces and reactions may appear, a lot of them are just glad they're not up <laughs> speaking. But, but others are really supportive, typically, of the speaker and or the message that he's trying to get across. And that's one of the basic underlying things. But it's hard to tell somebody that until they've experienced it. And they can experience it. Uh, I often say it's just like flight time. The only difference between myself and a speaker who has spoken maybe 15 times is perhaps I've done it 1,500 times. The drill is the same. 
the adrenaline rush, which people call stage fright, but is actually a natural energy sent to offset your stress as opposed to increase it, uh, is, is something that, uh, as I say, most of the course is all good news. It's those things that you may not have thought of that are actually there to help you through what most people think of as the most stressful situation they could ever be in, which is speaking to the public. And yet, at another level, every every time we open our mouths and speak to one, two, or three people, or a thousand people, it's public speaking. Yeah. Well, the famous Patricia Fripp always says, there is no uh, private speaking. Everything you do outside the comfort of your home is public speaking. Absolutely. And so you know, being being good at it. And I would imagine, Sheena, that there's a lot of actors who, you know, get in front of the camera and have stage fright to a certain degree as well. For sure. Yeah. I mean, we work with actors of all kinds of, uh, all kinds of backgrounds, including kids. So, yeah. you know, kids that might really... Uh, do well in an audition on set maybe they freeze up so yeah I should, yeah, I'd in front of that camera <laughs> Lisa I'd like to return for a couple of reasons to what uh, Sheena's just uh, mentioned or mentioned previously yeah. and that is that uh, again the type of production that that Sheena manages and and produces is a great opportunity often overlooked by people who want to be Hollywood stars. And that is the opportunity to get involved in a whole world of, of filmmaking and, and video production that has to do with education, social yeah. issues, documentaries, uh, companies talking to other companies, companies talking to their employees. One of the magic aspects of Linda's Farm Productions, and I was associated with them for years, so I've gotten a chance to work with Sheena, is the way that, is the way that she can work with non- professional speakers, yeah. that is the people inside a company who have a message to deliver, who are petrified when that light goes on and, and the camera starts up. Uh, Sheena has a wonderful way of, of putting them at ease and just just conversing with them. And I know uh, a lot of times going into situations like that, the company itself will say, oh, you should get Lisa. Lisa has a great bubbly personality. She makes everybody laugh at the staff parties and the water cooler and the coffee room. And so you bring in Lisa, uh, who is funny and smart and clever. But boy, oh boy, when the light is in her face and the camera is looking at her and somebody asks a question, sometimes that life of the party girl kind of <laughs> freezes. Collapses. And, and just... It's just so alien to where uh, to her comfort zone, but that's where uh, producers like Sheena can get in. And and I say producer, that's only one element of what of what Sheena does, but but can get to the part of of that person that just says, "We really know you've got information that is important to the people who will be watching this project." So just tell us how to just tell me. Look at me. Don't worry about the camera, and and tell me story of how you got started or how you found this or how you got to that level. And it's yeah. it's also a great opportunity for those who want to be in front of the camera or have a career, say, in voice work, because many of Sheena's projects uh, use voice talent, not on yeah. camera talent, uh, to, to tell the story of what we're seeing on screen. Uh, there's, there's a great way. For me, it was an opportunity to assume the responsibilities that I rarely had before of, of a director yeah. and, and to work with people, coach them to, to feel more comfortable as well in, in terms of what they were doing. So this arena of uh, non Hollywood uh, yeah. kinds of things still has opportunities for uh, Sheena's company has put out great satires or comedies. I remember the one Sheena that you did for the uh, certified public accountants that, that was all done with like, six and eight year old kids with coffee cups. Like they were, you know, spouting the kinds of things that uh, uh, the organization wanted to promote in terms of its principles and new horizons. And it was a, it was a hoot. So there is, there's no restrictions on the kind of creative work that you can do uh, at, in a variety of levels and in a variety of environments. And for those who want to go on and be in Hollywood or something like that, this is a lovely stepping stone, a lovely way to, get some great hours of yourself on tape so you can create a demo reel like the folks saw earlier 
uh, yeah. and, and say, don't take my word for it. Here, here's my reel. You can see the variety of things I've done and how they worked. And they will owe that, the quality of that reel, to people like Sheena. Yeah. And Sheena, I would suspect that nowadays, because social media, I mean, video is everywhere in social media now. And so not only, like you said, Fred, good point, companies are looking at building production and, and social media. I mean, it, I would imagine that business has gotten fairly lucrative because of what's happening in the social space. And everybody wants a sizzle reel or an animated reel or some kind of explainer video specific to their product or their service. That's right. Yeah. I mean, we used to deliver everything on tape or DVD and now everyone wants, you know, their material online or, you know, we've done work for interpretive centers where it's interactive. Um, so yeah, video is, video is everywhere. Well, I often think back to my private investigation days and thinking of, of shooting video in my camera bag, hidden and cognito nowadays or how much easier my job would have been with it with the phone and just every nobody would have ever noticed that that's what I was doing <laughs> yeah, that's cool I didn't know that was your background yeah uh, many many well I'm not gonna say too many years ago but quite a few years ago I used to do it for insurance companies and for child custody cases actually so I uh, have a little bit of experience in the video side but definitely not to the experience of what you're talking about but there is a number of different ways that video is definitely being used nowadays and it's not just like you said Fred for the Hollywood scene there's a lot of corporate companies a lot of personal companies influencers um, who are trying to make a name for themselves use video as well for sure so I I had no idea when you were pointing that purse at me that you were actually taking my picture. I thought you were <laughs> just to make a point. Well, Fred, much more happened the first time we ever met than you can ever imagine. Apparently so. <laughs> <laughs> well, it got me on the show, so I'm grateful for it. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So now, Fred, tell me, you worked with the with John Candy, the great John Candy. Right, what yeah. was that experience like for you, Mina? He was. Yeah, it was wonderful. SCTV uh, did their first three seasons in Edmonton uh, down at yep. the ITV studios. And um, and at the time, a number of us uh, actors in town would be pulled in to perform uh, extra work, background work, they call yep. it now, uh, the smaller roles inside of a, a scene that takes place in a marketplace or a store or something like that. And uh, a lot of those folks also uh, work for a living. And so if the production got backed up or delayed, and sometimes they were writing those scenes on the fly, uh, yes. folks who had kind of time commitments, as it came closer and closer to, to, well, I should say, as their start time got further and further away, people had to, to leave to get to, to their jobs and opportunities. As an unemployed guy, <laughs> I had no period of time. And I literally remember the first time I worked with Candy, I, I had gotten there with about 40 other people in the in the morning. And, and they had these long benches where the extras sat in the studio. And literally, as people either did their scenes and then left or ran out of time and had to go to the jobs, I was constantly moving down the bench closer and closer. And, and I sat there for about six hours till about four in the afternoon. There were only four or five of us left and they needed more guys and, and didn't have them. So they had to upgrade us to speaking roles. <laughs> Terrific. Darn. And that's Terrible. what got me into a number of scenes with, uh, uh, with, with Mr. Candy. And at the time uh, I remembered the producer saying to us, here's the scene. He comes in, he's going to say hi to you, get on with his work and so on and so forth. And so I didn't know at the time that I, I didn't know we had any lines, so to speak. So I was standing there and he came in and said, hi, how you doing? And I went like that. I think I was playing a cop or something. I went like, I'm going okay. And, and then they, they cut the scene and Candy comes over and he says, listen, when I come in and say hi to you, say hi back, you know, <laughs> Okay, so so they started again and he came in and said, how you doing, Constable? And I said, fine, how are you? You know, and he said, fine, and went on and did the scene. And, of course, the producers are going, now they got to pay me more because now I got lines. And 
And he did that all the time, and they they hated it, and every yes. actor in town loved him. Yeah. Because he was always felt he was in a position wherever he could to help a guy get a break, he would. And years yeah. later, when I was uh, hosting the awards at the Banff International Television yeah. Festival, it's now called the Banff World Media Festival, I got to be the guy, because of the history of, of a few uh, seasons with SCTV, when they honored him with the Sir Peter Ustinov Comedy Award, I got to write that presentation and compile the, the video that they showed the night that they honored him in Banff. Uh, and that's where I got a really lovely picture with him that I've, I've kept for years. Uh, he, was, he, was, uh, he was the real deal. Yeah. yeah. And I would suspect, I mean, you've, done, you've worked with a lot, you, I mean, over 40 movies, to the best of my knowledge, I'm sure there's more than that you've worked with, more than that in actors and actresses from all over the world. I would suspect that that's one of your most prized possessions, is your Absolutely. picture. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He was, he was a genuine force of nature and he was a, he was a, a tremendous. Well, and it was interesting because you said earlier when we were talking about that is that because you had a line, you got paid more. So is that how that works in the movie industry? If you're just the, the stand in oh, guy. You get paid oh, there, to... there are a number of, of categories. Um, you have, you have leads at the top yeah, and, and that can be anywhere from one to four people in a movie, depending on what it is. You have the supporting roles uh, yeah. and those are the ones who interact with the leads, but they're more part of the story than a supportive part of the story than, than driving the story the way the leads do. Yeah. Then there are principal performers. Uh, and that's, that's a category where I get most of my work principal, the, the odd supporting role, uh, but principal performers, again, often interact with the leads in some one or more scenes, depending on the on the size of the character. But uh, and then there are actor uh, you have to have so many lines. I may get this wrong. It used to be it used to be about 11 to 15 lines. If you had more than that. You were a principal player. Less than that uh, from like one to 15 lines or 11 lines at the time, I think. Uh, you were an actor. That was the, the term, just A C T O R. And then below that, you were uh, that is fewer lines, not necessarily less screen time. You were um, at the time they called them extras. They're now termed uh, more accurately background performers, because in addition to walking down the street or being in a crowd at a baseball park or something, uh, there are special business extras. They are the ones who ride the bike across the bridge or or do a little tap dance or play a fiddle and, and are a panhandler on the street, something that requires more than just being in the picture, and they get paid for that. And then there are stunt people uh, who, who uh, also qualify, again, with a range of risk and a range of, of responsibility. So there's all sorts of pay grades, uh, and basically it's also, if you have an agent, it's what, in fact, the agent can uh, – uh, negotiate for you on your behalf. Yeah. On your behalf, based on your track record, your reel, and the level of familiarity, and the size of the budget of the of the project. As well. the project, yeah. And so, uh, Sheena, you work with all different levels of, of actors and actresses. Then I, I would su I would suspect, um, and you're hiring all different levels, correct? That's Depending right. on the project. For what we do, it's more um, like non-unionized actor yeah. uh, for the corporate, government, commercial world. Yeah. So it's yeah. a little bit, it's a little bit different how it works, and the the fees aren't as set in stone. It's negotiable, kind of depending the budget that we have, the type of client that it is. For instance, if it's a charitable project, we might be able to get, you know, we might be able to get talent for for a little bit less. Whereas in the union. Um, in Hollywood, it's definitely more more standardized. Yeah. Well, and just talk a little. Sorry, go ahead, Fred. I was simply going to add to what Sheena said and, and say that mo most of the people I know, yeah, whether they're successful or perhaps less successful, are always, I think, nine out of ten times happy to get involved in a project for what the project is worth 
to them. So in terms of educational projects, yeah. uh, things that involve social issues that they're committed to, uh, whether they are stars or just people also looking to increase their own kind of ammunition for sizzle reels. Uh, yeah. it, most people are quite happy to, if they have the time, uh, to get involved, help a student out, help an organization out, and just yes. it's not about the money. There's more kinds of currency than coin. Absolutely. And, and, well, uh, what, you, what you earn in the relationships you build with an organization or the people in that organization, uh, that's currency that pays yeah. off for decades in ways you could never imagine. Uh, all of a sudden you start getting jobs and you say, what, how, where'd you hear me? Oh, you, so-and-so told me. And it's somebody yeah. that you yeah. did a little favor for several years earlier and it's come come back to you. And there you go. There's something that week that you didn't have before. Well, well, well said. Currency other than actual money, right? And, and very important. And it doesn't really matter if you're in, in the acting industry, if you're in the video production industry, no matter what industry you are, you sometimes have to look at the value of what the currency is and not necessarily that it's actual monetary value in your pocketbook. Well, I, I know that some of the projects that Sheena's been involved in might not have strong budgets, but because of the relationships she's built yeah. with cinematographers or editors or favors she's done for them in the past by making some of her facilities open for them to finish a, a project for love, uh, then uh, there's a there's a great deal of give and take. You know, what Absolutely. you put out there comes back. You got to put yeah. it out. You know? Absolutely. So what's next for Fred? What's next? What What's your next role? I know you had a Netflix role uh, uh, most recently. What's next? Where can we find you next on TV? Well, I'm currently... Uh, I, I, a lot of times we're asked not to not to talk yeah. about participation in a program prior to the studio's publicity machine going out and, and generating uh, se selling the information they want to Fair share. Yeah. Uh, basically, as soon as this interview is over, uh, I'm getting into uh, my vehicle and, and driving about a half an hour to the set of a CBC series that. Uh, That's okay. We know to look at CBC in what month of the year ahead. Well, should we I, look? I believe it's the fall, and it's a ten-part okay. series on one of Canada's. Uh, it's a, a Canadian history about a particular event that stretched over a couple of years. But the the, the I guess the that, so that's where I'm going next. Yeah. Is, and so earlier did a week I, I did this about. Two months ago, and in the ensuing two months, I've been involved in a couple of other projects. So I shot this scene that I'm going to do two months ago, and last week, in fact, up to about two hours ago, uh, this is what I looked like <laughs> because, of, because of what I was involved in last week. And so last night at about 10 p.m., I got a call from the CBC people saying, "What's your time like tomorrow?" <laughs> what and and they said well we 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 have to reshoot for a number of reasons they don't have to do with the actors some camera things some ideas have come up we need to reshoot the scene you did for us and uh, well, what your time is like and i said well i have an interview tomorrow with a person that has rescheduled twice because of commitment so i'm i'm available to you but only mid to late afternoon that's all that's, that's <laughs> Well, Sheena and I are honored that you pushed <laughs> yeah. off the, the movie industry for us. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, there was one point, I, one other little thing I brought along to show you, know, because I know one of the questions you wanted to ask was, how do you get started? Yeah. And one of the, my answers to that is often, well, what is it that you love to do now? I brought with me a, a uh, this is called a call sheet. It's like a... Uh, it's like the newspaper or the show that you're on, and it comes out late at night. It comes out the last thing after the shooting that day is done. Then this sets up the next day's shooting, what scenes, what actors, what time they're supposed to be on, 
on the set in makeup hair, the whole nine yards. What's going to happen tomorrow if we get all the scenes done that we hope to do today? But the important sheet is the next one. This is who's on set that day. Now, I'll read you some of the bold print, but basically there's about 50 different categories of, of work here. And underneath each one of those categories is a variety of, of jobs that start right at the top with producers, directors, uh, accounting, camera team, electrics, grips, the guys that move things, special effects, the hair team, costumes, artwork, set deck, construction, electrics. They even have a group called Greens, which are the people who are responsible for having the right trees or bushes <laughs> in a scene that's supposed to be October in Wyoming or oh February in Florida or whatever the scene is, whatever the year is, these guys are guys who are like gardeners, like golf course maintenance guys, like floral architects and designers whose job it is to make sure that if, if it's supposed to be a meadow outside of Brooklyn in the fall of 1938, this is what would be growing there. But what's wow. funny is to see them. The other day I was on a, on a set and, and, we were doing this forest scene. We did the forest scene over and over. And they said, okay, we're moving on. And about 20 guys came in and lifted up the fir trees that we'd been running in. They were all on big square platforms, like artificial Christmas trees. And the forest wasn't a forest anymore. But it, and then you got guys walking around with two big trees in their hand, you know, put them on a truck for the next shot or the next place. And, but it's all got to be right. The wheat has to be this high. The corn has to be that brand of corn in August in that year in that province. Well, and those are things that us common lame people who watch the movies don't even even don't even think about that happens that creates the movie, right? But, and so that that's that's great insight about what happens and how many people are truly involved. And so now when you're public speaking, I know that you're about to create an online course. Um, and I know that Sheena. I'm working on guys, it. I, this is the second. I know time. you are. So Sheena, on. you guys ha do video production as well, and so I want to talk just briefly before we close the show with the, for anybody who's a subject matter expert or an influencer who's looking to create online courseware and do the video production. You do that as well, correct? That's right. Uh, do you mean like coaching people how to do their own? Yeah, well, coaching or shooting the video, shooting the actual script that creates the video files for the courseware. So it's not just about doing, you know, the, the Hollywood. It, there's other avenues to reach out to you to seek for help, correct? Exactly. Yep. We've worked with influencers who do everything. Um, you know, they write their own scripts, come up with their own content, but they're just not comfortable or they just don't really want to invest the time and money into the camera equipment and the editing yeah. and they can focus more on their social media promotion and uh yeah. that kind of thing so we've been hired by people like that to come in with our production crew but they're coming up with the scripts and everything so yeah, yeah. absolutely well that's fantastic and i know fred you're always looking for more speaking engagement not just acting engagements and so if anybody wants to reach out to uh, fredkeating.ca and L I N D I S F A R N E dot dot com or dot C A for your website. It's actually easier to spell than that. It's showtellmove.com. Oh, right. Right. Yeah. Very good. Excellent. Okay. And, and uh, when we do the replay, we'll obviously put all that on the bottom of the screen for everybody. But I really appreciate your guys' time. Fred, I know you got to get on to a movie set. And I know that you've got another job to go to, Sheena. So thank you very much, both of you, for your time. I'm looking forward to the Get Over the Fear of Public Speaking course coming soon from Fred. And uh, we'll take care of you guys. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, for Bye having us. All the best. Great to see you again, Sheena. You too. Bye.